let me actually ask uh, Ashok Mansukani. Ashok, there's a clear battle on between digital cable and DTH. How do you see this battle evolving? What is the likely impact? Do you think the share of DTH and digital cable will perhaps settle at 50-50 or is that too early to call? I'm too closely involved, I think, with the industry to be uh, what you call an objective analyst. But I do notice trends in both digital cable and DTH. And I think it's very difficult to say where it will be in 2015. But broadly, the way I look at it is a 65-35 regime, which is 65 in favor of digital cable, provided it does phase two properly, and 35% for DTH, not for any other reason, but there are many issues of costs in terms of capacities, in terms of the ability of the cable operator to be entrepreneurial and to be value for money oriented. And I think there are inherent costs of, of, of DTH, which ultimately do get passed on to consumers. So I think ultimately when the customer starts getting a bill and begins to realize that he is getting A product for so and so price and B product, which is the same product for X, Y, Z price, I think he will go back to cable. Uh, I don't expect you to say that the consumer will go back to cable, R.C. Venkatesh. But where do you think this is going to settle? Do you think it's going to take a while for this balance to be achieved? Or do you think there will be a clear winner among the two? No, as we have always uh, maintained, uh, it would depend on the kind of geographies. Uh, and we've always said that in the four metros, which are compact territories, uh, cable has uh, a fairly good hold. And uh, DTH uh, share in those four metros, for example, and also in some of the second phase cities, uh, you will have uh, cable companies which are well entrenched and well wired up uh, have a have a good share. And we had estimated about 35 to 40 percent for DTH and about 60 to 65 percent for cable in the first phase. And as you keep going into the hinterland in phase two, in phase three, and phase four. DTH will gain the upper hand because in those areas the level of penetration of cable is still low and it's a very fragmented market. Hold the thought, you know, how is all of this going to change or affect the advertiser's decision-making capability? Uh, two ways, actually. Mm. Uh, one is uh, from a targeting perspective, mm. it becomes even more easier for him. Okay. Um, uh, as uh, you know, there are two two things that starts playing a role from an advertisers. One is reach that he's delivering, and second is the profile of audiences that he gets. Sure. Now, for the, for the reach purposes, if he's looking at uh, uh, genres that is going to give him that particular uh, length mm. uh, to communicate his messages, mm. he's going to bang onto that straight away. Sure. Now, the other side is that there may be small channels which may be uh, adjacent to the bigger genres. Mm. Okay? We may not get the reach numbers, but as walk-ins happen and people trial content and good content, as Sanjay said, really uh, strikes a chord with the audiences, mm. those content will create those stickiness with a specific skew to, pro uh, to audiences' mm. profile. Mm. That profile channels, profiled channels, which are suitable for his uh, brands, mm. will also start gaining acceptance in terms of advertising. Mm. Greater targeting, better bang for the buck? Yes, better targeting, better bang for the buck. Mm. But I don't think that we have proper measurement in place. In my mind, we are still far away from the diversity of content consumption that will happen in the country. Mm. And Why the depth of our measurement. Why do you say that? If you look at, we still measure only urban in this country. Mm. And more than half of television consumption happens in rural. Mm. So we are not measuring more than half of it. LV, answer this. <laughs> yeah, have... sure, of course. Yeah. Which is true. Okay, uh, rural is a thrust that one needs to get into because 50% of cable television uh, and uh, digital is in rural India. Mm. Therefore, uh, we still have measuring only urban in nature. Mm. Okay. Uh, that's a progressive step, actually. Mm. And I mm. think there's a vision as an industry to measure rural. Sure. And we're getting there bit by bit, actually. Mm. Uh, second is the uh, measurement in, from a point of view of qualitative levels. Mm. Okay. Can that be enhanced on top of what we have today as a quantitative measurement? Mm. Yes, it can. Mm. Uh, we've got to look beyond, uh, beyond uh, a simple people meter measurement metric action. Sure. Okay. We've got to look at saying the fact that, okay, this is what is quantitative data coming to us. Sure. This is a reach and time spent. Mm. Now, can I create more metrics? 
that can uh, allow me to evaluate the qualitative nature of the content mm. and bring in a couple of other additional research along with it. Mm. And there are uh, attempts being made where some of them are actually looking at PGI data mm. and saying that, okay, to these uh, questions that are attitudinal mm. questions, mm. what kind of channels more fit in with that, with that kind of a profile of audiences? Sure. Okay. So there is a generic trend towards looking at a wholesome approach to research mm. rather than the earlier skewed, mm. uh, uh, fundamentally quantitative data that one was looking at earlier.